Good morning, my name's Dan. And I'm Esther, and welcome to New Life Church Online. We're going to jump straight into our family together time. Welcome to Family Together Time. My name is Brandy. My name's Anna. My name's Matt. My name's Bea. And we are here for 15 minutes every week to help you as a family connect with God. Now, it doesn't matter what your family or household looks like, whether you've got children, teenagers, adults, any mixture. Uh, we just want to have some time of meeting together, of connecting with God now and of giving you guys some tools so that you can do that for the rest of the week. We know 15 minutes is a teeny tiny bit of your whole week, especially when you're at home and not going to school this week. I hope everyone is doing okay. Um, but yeah, we are here. We also just wanted to say, uh, you may notice we've got a bit of a different location. We aren't um, sticking to all government guidelines. We've just moved house. So in case anyone was worrying about that. Should we start with a game? A game! Yeah, I love a game. So this is a listening game. We are going to play you some sounds and we would like you to guess what they are. Now you can type them in the comments. You can shout them out in your house. Uh, and yeah, guess what they are, and we want to know how many you get right. Okay. Right, they get not It's the sound. It's a book. Flipping through the pages of a book. What a sound. Anyone know what it is? It's the microwave. What a sound. It's a clock tick tocking. What is that? It's the washing machine. Well, not quite the washing machine. What is it? Tumble dryer. The tumble dryer. What's the sound? It's the kettle boiling. What's this sound? We'd love to know who is the overall champion. We are going to kick off with some worship now at one that is always a favourite and nice and high energy and upbeat. What are we going to sing? One way. Jesus! You are always, always there. Every how and everywhere. Your grace abounds so deeply within me. You will never change yesterday today the same forever till forever needs no end For you, living on for you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith and not by sight. For you, living on for you. Jesus, 
This morning, later in our church service, Tim is going to be sharing a little bit more from Deuteronomy 6, which is a special Hebrew prayer called the Shema. Ooh. Um, and I have it here. So I'm going to read it for us now. This comes from Deuteronomy. It's a funny name. But it's a, a book about um, the laws and how to live God's way. And it sounds like this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them upon your children. See you guys. <laughs> Talk about them when you sit at home, which is what we're doing now, and when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So you might have heard that before. It is one of my absolute favourite passages. I feel like I say that every week, but it's still, I really, really like it. And what I like about it is that it reminds us that our journeying with God and helping other people get to know him, whether that's people in our family, like our children or our parents or people at work or people at school, doesn't actually have to be very complicated. It's just a normal part of our everyday. As we go about walking along and getting up and going to bed, we can connect with God and just share with the people around us what we're doing and why. Now, this says you should do things like talk about it when you walk along the road or when you're in your house, when you go to bed. But those are just daily things. So if we were doing talking about this for our context, um, being a bit more modern, we might say talk about it while you're in the car or maybe while you're watching TV. They just didn't have those things when this was written. So we're going to explore three different things today. Can you show me three fingers? It's your special number, isn't it? You got three? Close. <laughs> Nearly. You guys can do it. Three things, okay? Uh, and this is a bit of a spoiler. We're nicking what Tim's going to say. But frankly, if you turn up at 9.40, I think you should get some spoilers. Uh, so we are going to talk. This uh, uh, is all about how to help us in 2021 for us to journey with God and how to help other people. So we are going to listen. We are going to love. And then we are going to live. Can you remember those things? Yeah. Live. Love, live. Right. Yeah, the order listen. doesn't really matter, but we will start with listen. Now, this ties into what we were thinking about last year, all about listening to God or catching, I haven't got my ball this week, catching what God is going to say to us. God is speaking to us all the time, often not with a voice that we can hear, but in loads of different ways. Let's just remind ourselves of some of those ways now. Okay, so one way would be um, through the Bible. God's words are written down, his messages and stories about what he's done are all there in the Bible. And sometimes when we're saying, oh God, please would you talk to me? We haven't actually tried picking up our Bible and reading it and really seeing what it says. So that's a brilliant one to try out. And we're going to be doing that a little bit later. Uh, the second way we wanted to share is just about um, in dreams and visions. Did you guys have any dreams last night? I wish I could see a firework. Did you? <laughs> okay. And I did see a firework. Well, in Acts 2, 17, it says, Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Sometimes God gives us a dream or a vision, which is sort of like a dream, but just when you're awake. And it's God trying to tell us something. Think of someone like Joseph in the Bible. Uh, that was one of the main ways that God spoke to him and told him what was going on. Did you know that we can hear God just through our common sense or through the advice of other people? Um, we've been doing some morning Bible studies as a church going through the book of Proverbs. Proverbs. And in there, there's a proverb that says the way of fools seems right to them. But wise people listen to advice. I'm hugging you. So God and the Holy Spirit can speak to us just by <laughs> just by the wisdom that comes from the spirit inside us. And I getting that wisdom from other people. Okay, how else can we hear God? You're probably thinking of loads more ways. We're just going to share two more. Uh, we can hear God in personal reflection. You remember the Christmas story that we've just heard? It says that Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. That's in Luke 2. Isn't that a beautiful way of putting it? Mary stopped and had a little bit of time and space just reflecting with God. It's so often when we take a moment to be still, whether that's reading the Bible or just listening and seeing what pops into our head, uh, when God is able to speak to us. But it's not just all about sitting down um, uh, because we actually can hear God when we do 
um, when we're acting it out, when we're doing what God says. Um, the Bible says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. So it's as we're doing those things, sometimes you just need to go and start doing something that God's asked you to do. And then you'll hear about the next step. So that was all about listening. But now we're going to talk about loving. It's all very good listening. But if we don't do anything about it, if we listen and stay completely still and don't take action, then it's not actually very loving. So I'll give you an example from our house. We have stinky socks that turn up everywhere. Do you have stinky socks in your house? And I spend lots of my time saying, Brielle, Benji, please can you pick up the stinky socks? And do you listen to mummy? <laughs> Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you do. And they're listening and that's brilliant. But I don't feel very loved until they actually take action. Get the socks. Can you get the socks? get all the socks, collect them all up and take them to the washing basket. They're helping me on my eternal mission of keeping the house tidy or at least not a total tip. Uh, and I feel loved and encouraged and close to them no, as we work together yeah. and they do what I say. And it's a little bit like that with God. God's got a big plan and a big mission and he loves us to be part of it. But when we listen, when he tells us something that's to help us or to help other people around us, We've got to do it. <laughs> We've got to actually take action and um, show our love for him by going for it and doing it. So that's kind of the live bit as well. OK, so I've, I've squished love and live together there a little bit more. Um, we've got to get out there. We've got to do whatever he's asked us. And the cool thing is that as we do that, we can share with the people around us. So like we were saying before, the people in your family, the people at your work, people at your school, when we're allowed back to school, um, you can share a little bit about what's going on. And that will help them to draw close to God, to listen to him and to love and live out his work as well. Fantastic. Right, we're going to have a little bit of time of listening to God now. And um, we are going to do it through the Bible. That was the first way that Matt suggested. Um, so what I've asked Matt to do, this is a little bit like our Facebook Live morning meditations that happen at eight o'clock on Facebook. Uh, so you may or may not have done those before. But what Matt's going to do is read out a little bit from the Bible. If you've got a Bible, go and grab it or look it up on your phone or tablet, computer. We're going to read from John chapter 14 verses 15 to 21 and I would love you to just listen and see if anything pops out for you just say God I want to listen I want to hear what you have to tell me so that I can love you by going out and living it and um, would you just show me something that's going on so Holy Spirit would you just highlight something to us now okay so this again is John 14 starting at verse 15 and there'll be a memory verse from here in a minute as well it goes like this. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the father and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you will know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will, see, will not see me anymore. But you will see me because I live. You will also live on that day. You will recognize that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, they are the ones who love me. He who loves me will be loved by my father and I, too, will love him and show myself to him. Now, what do you think? Does anything stand out to you there? Ooh. What words are pinging off the page? or lighting up in your mind. The activity this week is to find a place to record all the things that you're learning. I don't know about you, but I have a memory like a goldfish and I can listen to God, but sometimes my problem with loving him by living it out is that I can't remember what he said. Um, so I like to have a place to do that. So you could get a notebook and decorate it. Uh, you could get a big sheet of paper and a poster. You could um, find somewhere online to do it. So I really like to use an app called Penzu, but any kind of journaling app, something like that. And this can be such a helpful way of reminding us what we've learned so the things that have stood out to us from the bible or uh, things that other people have said to us that have been good wise counsel and advice or pictures dreams visions ideas that god has shown us to have them all in one place and it's so powerful i had an experience uh, about 15 years ago where i 
was very, very worried. I felt really alone and scared and like God didn't talk to me. And I got out a huge, well, I didn't have a big sheet of paper. I sellotaped together lots and lots of sheets of paper. And I wrote in the middle, God does speak to me. And I thought back over the um, weeks and months beforehand and drew little pictures. I can't really draw, but drew little pictures, wrote some Bible verses, uh, wrote some dreams I'd been having. And it was so amazing and encouraging to see all the things that God had said. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even remember in that moment, but to have them in front of me. So do whatever works for you. Either write it down somewhere on line in a notebook or a big yeah. poster yeah. and as usual we've got some family discussion questions and um, just for you to really share about how you listen to God how you catch from him and help each other with that uh, and also to take next steps in really loving God by going and living it out that's all we got time for, for now we will be back at the same time next week have a wonderful week and enjoy the rest of the service bye bye, bye. thank you so much guys we hope you enjoy that as much as we did we're going to have a quick break now, so go make a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, go and get a snack, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Actually, I'd, I'd actually really like a cup of tea. Yeah, sure, I'd fancy a coffee, actually. Yeah, let's go.
morning and welcome back if you're just coming back and welcome welcome i guess if you're just joining us basically <laughs> welcome to our Hello, service welcome yeah. i'm esther this is dan and we're really really happy to have you with us we'd love to know if you're watching with us so like and share this video and pop a hello in the comments and say hi. We'd love to see you. We're going to go into worship now. And just before we do that, I'm going to read a passage from the Bible. And what we do this morning is we're going to hear some word, uh, a word from uh, the Bible taught by Tim and some worship. And we're going to have some fun together. Uh, and what we're going to do is just glorify Jesus. So by that we mean we're just going to give him glory, give him praise, give him thanks. And this is a passage from the Bible that's speaking about Jesus. And it says, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets and many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, who he appointed heir of all things and through whom he also made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. So, yeah, Jesus, we give you glory this morning and we say you are worthy. We say you are worthy of all things because of your sacrifice for us. And we give you all the praise this morning. Amen. Good morning. We are so excited to be doing worship with you this morning. And one of the things I just wanted to start with was a verse, a Bible verse from the older part of the Bible called uh, the Old Testament. It's a book called Deuteronomy, chapter four, chapter four, sorry, verse nine. And these are the words. Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This morning we want to remember how God is always with us, previously helped us, because it builds our faith and it gives us confidence that he can do it again. And this morning, I really want to encourage you, I know that there's been times that this has been so precious to me and my family, to sing out the words of the song, to really sing them out, not just, just from the voices, but from the heart too. And that you will, these words from the songs that we have do, have chosen this morning will resonate in your heart around your home, through your, uh, every room in your house, in your lives, through your work, whatever situation you're facing right now. I know that we're all experiencing and feeling different things, but let's remember the goodness of God in the land of the living.
Jesus keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Cause you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Cause you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 that is who you are. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working we make a miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. depression, Lord, in illness, Lord, with our children, Lord, in our sadness, Lord, in loneliness. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. That is who you are, that is who you are, Jesus. In our lives, Lord, in our city, Lord, in our country, Lord, in this world, Lord. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are that is who Coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. 
Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. We hope that you're enjoying being a part of our community and we'd love for you to partner with us as we seek to reach people with the hope of Jesus. One of the ways that you can do this is through giving. Everything we have has been given to us by God and we have the choice to give back to him and put our trust in him even when circumstances seem hard. God is inviting us to put our trust in him and give cheerfully. If you're wanting to take a step of trust in God today and give to the mission of New Life Church, click on the link in the description or scan the QR code that's on the screen now. You can give either a one-off gift or set up a recurring donation securely online. Thank you so much for partnering with us on our mission to reach people with the love of Jesus. I'm gonna pray now and give thanks to God. Father, we thank you for all you have given us. And as we give back to you, we pray that you will multiply our gifts and use them for your kingdom. We pray as people give to your work that you provide their every need as your word says. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks Andy and team. And guys at home, I really hope God's spoken to you through that worship and uh, that you've just really enjoyed being in his presence this morning. We're going to hand over to Tim now. And a fun fact, the shorter Tim's hair gets, the longer mine does. He's going to read from our Bible for us and teach us a little bit about God and how we can learn more about him and obey his word. So I'm going to hand over to him now. What do you hear? What is the dominant rhetoric filling the airwaves right now? Take a look on social or at the news and you'll see it almost immediately. In big, bold letters, there is hope for 2021. Hope in the vaccine, hope in getting back to normal. Maybe you've seen social posts from friends and family saying, I hope this year is better than the last, or I can't wait to get my life back. After what has been a crazy year and one that no one wants to repeat, there's an air of optimism, a, a hope that we have turned the corner perhaps. Everyone is hoping for the same thing which is life. We want to live life unhindered, unrestricted and unrestrained. 
And I want to encourage you today that there is indeed a way to life this year, a hope for a better future. But this hope doesn't lie with our external circumstances. Our hope is not in a vaccine or herd immunity. Our hope is not in seeing our friends and family again. And we must be careful not to confuse those things that we hope for and the one our hope is in. There's a popular Christian hymn in which the opening verse goes like this. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, this solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. That has inspiration uh, for the song taken from Jesus' parable of the wise and foolish builders in Matthew 7. Jesus himself said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. There is hope for life in abundance this year. And while we should be encouraged by positive developments this year, let us not lean on even the sweetest of frames, but wholly trust in the name of Jesus. So how do we step into the abundant life that Jesus has promised? The foundational answer is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. And this is true. And if you don't know Jesus, there is an offer of eternal life and life in abundance for you. If you'd like to know more about receiving this life, there will be a link in the comments and in the video description where you can find out more about Jesus. But many who have accepted Christ might still ask the question, what is this life in abundance? How do I experience it? Maybe for you, life seems anything but abundant at the moment. Maybe there are areas of your life with little signs of living at all. And while Jesus' promise of life is of an eternal nature, I believe that you can begin to experience this fullness of life right now. It's in the act of discipleship, being lifelong learners and followers of Jesus that we can begin to experience life full of joy, marked by peace and led by love. For those who want the quick answer, the key to a life of abundance, here it is. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. And that's taken straight from the Bible, so it's all legal. And if you go away and do that one thing, you'll be sorted. But for many of us, we don't need to hear another sermon or read another book or go to another conference. For many of us, the gap between the life that Jesus promised and the life that we experience isn't a knowledge gap. It's an obedience gap. And you might say, Tim, that's a bit oversimplistic and you'd be right. But the premise still stands. So for those that wanted a fresh word for today, there it is. Uh, But for those that want to lean in and understand, come with me to Deuteronomy chapter six. Let me set the scene first. So here we are. The nation of Israel had been rescued from slavery in Egypt and led out into the wilderness by God. They had received a promise from God about inheriting a land of abundance, a land flowing with milk and honey. A land where all their enemies would be driven out. A place uh, where they could move from surviving to thriving. This journey from the place where they had received the promise to the border of the the land that they had been promised was physically only 11 days travel away. But you know what? It took them 40 years to get there. And this is where we join the story. After 40 years of wandering, Moses is giving his final speeches reminding Israel where they had come from and where they are going. And if you're anything like me, uh, I like to use the new year a bit like this. I use it as a time to reflect on where I have come and look ahead to where I want to be. Maggie and I journal this stuff each year and pray over it, giving it to God. And here we have this hugely significant speech from Moses, just before they move in to take possession of the land. And within it, there is a subtle key to understanding why an 11 day journey took 40 years. Let's read it together. 
hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. This is the word of God. Israel had been given the promised land but they couldn't enter and take possession of it straight away because in God's eyes, they were not able to steward it well. You see, their ability to rule well in the land was directly related to their willingness to be ruled well by God. God had told Israel that they wouldn't gain the land all at once, that they had to grow in their ability to exercise godly authority and come under God's authority. They'd heard the words of God, but these words stayed between their two ears and didn't shift down into their hearts. It took them 40 years to learn how to hear well. I've been known on the odd occasion to have an interaction with my wife that goes something a little like this. Maggie, being highly able to juggle many things at once and plan and prepare in ways that I can only dream of, would judge it appropriate at certain times to share with me the latest thing that she'd been thinking through, whether that be our meal plans for the week or an important occasion coming up like a birthday or an anniversary that we needed to remember. She would tell me things while I stare off into the distance, occupied by the latest football transfer rumours or something equally as important as that. And then when when she's finished, she checks in with me by saying, did you get all of that? And I, feeling rather smug, recite back to her word for word. And so fast forward a couple of days and a follow up conversation begins and it goes like this. And she she asks me if I have managed to do what she had asked of me. Stuck for a response, I continue to stare off into the distance and hoping that somehow by osmosis I had managed to clock what she was saying and by chance happened to act upon it. Nothing. What happened? I heard her, but I didn't truly listen. I took the information in via my ears, but it didn't register with my heart. And here lies the problem for Israel. They heard God's word with their ears, but they didn't take them to their hearts. The whole point of a wilderness experience is to provide a testing or a proving. I sometimes wonder if they could have cut their journey down by a few years if they had just clocked a little bit earlier. Many of you may feel like you've been in a wilderness season this past year. I want to encourage you to take some time to reflect on what God has been teaching you in this season. What you learn in the trials is often the key to your triumph. Maybe the key to stepping into abundant life this year for you is by putting into practice the lessons learned in the wilderness last year. And so this is why Moses says what he says in his opening line. He says, hear, O Israel. The word hear in the Hebrew language is shema. It's a significant word. The word that our English translations of the Bible translate hear means more than to merely listen with your ears. It has a two-pronged meaning. It means to hear and to do, to listen and obey. Moses is saying here, come. Pay attention to what I'm about to say and take action. Come and respond to the Lord. Come and respond. Hear and do. Listen and obey. But here's the thing. God wasn't mad that they were out of control and didn't obey his orders. He was grieving a breakdown in relationship, a loss of love. Because hearing and obeying is not about law and legalism. It's not about have to's and should's and must's. It's about love. 
Jesus confirms this in John 14, 21. It says, whoever has or hears my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Israel didn't respond to God because they didn't know him. Listening is about relationship first. Our obedience flows from that place. And you know, there are two ways you can listen. You can listen in order to know something, or you can listen in order to know someone. You can listen to know something, to gain information. This kind of listening leads to knowledge. It's intellectual. In this first instance, we can listen to accrue information, to build up a picture. And we are the beneficiary of the listening because our knowledge increases. Or you can listen to know someone, to grow in intimacy. It leads to understanding and greater empathy. We listen with our hearts. We hear not just the words being said, but the heart with which they are being spoken. And this second instance, the beneficiary is the one being listened to. They feel known and they feel loved. Let me ask you, do you know Jesus? Do you truly know him? Let me tell you a story. As a young man, I had a passion for the Lord and there were many areas of my life that I had given to him. I served with all my heart and gave much of my time to him and to the church. But one area that I hadn't given fully to him was my finances. You see, I hadn't really paid much attention to what I did with my money. It came in and it went out and sometimes it went out quicker than it came in. I had learned about the importance of tithing as a kid and so I did that. But there was one point where I actually ended up getting into some debt. Relatively speaking, it wasn't a huge amount, but it was enough for me to panic and immediately withdraw my tithe. My first reaction was to withdraw my giving to the church to help me ease my burden. And God graciously but firmly spoke to me in that moment and he said to me, I've asked you for your first fruits, but instead you give me your leftovers. And when you don't have anything left over, you stop giving. The issue is that you don't trust me in this area. You don't know me to be good in this area. Trust me and give to me first and I will never let you down. And in that moment, my heart heard along with my ears and something changed in me. And I made a decision in that moment that I was going to honour God with the first fruit of everything I earned. Everything else came after that. And you know what? God has been incredibly faithful. You see, I had heard it all with my ears. I could quote the verses on testing God with your finances and how he is faithful to provide, but I hadn't heard it with my heart and taken action. We listen in love and we respond in love. If we take love out of the equation, all we are left with is empty rule keeping and legalism, which leads not to life, but to death. And this was Jesus's problem with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law in the New Testament. They held strictly to the laws of the Old Testament, but didn't know in love the one who had given them the laws. The laws were designed so that you could know God and know him intimately. I repeat John 14, whoever has or hears my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And going on, I too will love them and show myself or reveal myself to them. How does a young child learn to trust their father to catch them when jumping off a wall? Only by experience. The father is only proven trustworthy and a good catcher through experiential learning. Sometimes we hear in life, but we don't take action or obey. So let me ask you, is there any area in your life where you have not heard or you have heard but haven't taken action or responded? Are there areas in your life where God wants to reveal his nature to you experientially? So be doers of the word, not just listeners. We listen and we obey and in doing so we find life. There is life found in the very hearing of God's word. Jesus himself said, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the father. What's he saying? You need the word of God in order to survive in this life? No. No. 
He's saying the word of God is essential for thriving. You find life in hearing and you find life in obeying, being doers of the word. And this comes from James chapter 1 verses 22. It says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his own, uh, at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. You will be blessed in your hearing and your doing. Jesus himself said, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. Maybe you know this story. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall. Why? Because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. Again, the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one who had authority, unlike their usual teachers. There is a popular thought that goes around now that the laws and commands in the Bible are obsolete and are superseded by Jesus. People view them as legalistic and not in line with the grace of Jesus. But you know, Jesus himself said that he came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. You see, when we misunderstand what the law is for, we miss out on the benefit that it was designed for. Just 18 months ago, I traveled with a friend to Germany to visit his favorite theme park, Phantasialand. We spent the day in the torrential rain, visiting every ride and attraction that we could for maximum enjoyment. There was one ride in particular that caught my attention. This ride was billed as the fastest single moment of acceleration of any ride in the world. I had to try it. And as we approached and got on the ride, a man dressed in his theme park uniform went down the line and checked everyone's seatbelts and harnesses. You know, he wouldn't let the ride begin without everyone being strapped in tightly. But imagine if I had turned to him at that point and said, sorry, mate, I'd, I'd rather not wear this seatbelt because you know what, I think it might restrict or hinder my freedom. No, I wouldn't do that. Why? Because in order for me to enjoy what has been designed for my enjoyment, I need to take heed of the ride operator's instructions. It's not legalistic. Following their instruction leads to enjoyment and hopefully preserves life. Not obeying his instruction will almost certainly lead to death. So as well as responding in love, we also need to respond to the authority of Jesus to come under his rule and reign in our lives if we are to rule well with him. Remember, the Israelites couldn't possess the land promised to them because they weren't equipped to rule well, which was in direct correlation to their willingness to come under the rule of God. That's why Moses, after beginning, hear, O Israel, says the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He is saying there is only one God, one Lord. As the great missionary to China, Hudson Taylor once said, either he is Lord of all or he is not Lord at all. At the conclusion of Moses' speech, he gives a warning and an ultimatum. To listen and obey God will lead to great blessing, but to disobey will lead to devastation and exile. It's not legalistic. God is giving you a blueprint for life and life in abundance. You know, my ability to thrive this year does not depend on lockdown ending and me getting to spend time with friends and family and getting back to normal, whatever that is. My ability to thrive depends on my willingness to hear and obey, to listen and to love. That's where I find the life that Jesus promised me, 
I have come to you that you may have life and have it abundantly. It's John chapter 10, verse 10. So we listen and we love. And in those two things, we find life. So let's get practical. How do we listen to God and obey what he has spoken to us? Here's five ways. Firstly, you can hear God in the Bible. In Ezekiel chapter three, we read, son of man, eat this scroll I'm giving you and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. How do we respond to the Bible? Let me ask you, do you read the Bible to learn something? Or do you read it in order to know someone? Are there parts of scripture that you know in your head but haven't taken to your heart? What have you read that is waiting to be put into action? That's reading scripture. Secondly, here you can hear God in dreams and visions. Acts 2 verse 17 says, Your sons and daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Let me ask you, how do you respond to God uh, when he speaks to you through one of these? Do you believe that God wants to speak to you through the prophetic today? Are you collecting or storing up prophetic words? And what I mean by that is, are you constantly seeking a fresh word for yourself rather than partnering with God to see the fulfillment of those words? Thirdly, you can hear God in wise counsel. Proverbs 21.15 says, The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. So, do you have anyone that gives you wise counsel? Someone that can encourage you on the one hand and challenge you on the other? Do you seek out the counsel of others when making big decisions? Testing the will of God with those who are further on in their relationship with Jesus than you are? You know, God has placed us in community with fathers and mothers in the faith for this very purpose. Fourthly, you can hear God in personal reflection. Luke 2 verse 19 uh, recounts Mary treasuring up all these things, the promises of God and pondering them in her heart. Do you meditate on scripture, allowing it to dwell in you, to grow and develop? My times of uh, devotion with God used to be about ticking off a spiritual to-do list, read the Bible, pray, etc. But God challenged me to read and pray slowly, to be present in the moment and not to miss what he wanted to say to me in between my hurry and hustle. And lastly, you can hear God in action. Luke 11, 28 says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Blessed. Sometimes the best way to hear God is to take action and see him reveal himself to you. I had to make a decision to trust God with my finances and in taking action, I saw the goodness of God in that area of my life. Something I couldn't have experienced unless I had taken a step of faith. Those are the five ways. There are many more, I'm sure. But let me ask you as we close, are you struggling to hear the voice of God in your life? I want to encourage you, if you are, to go back to where God last spoke to you and camp out there. Perhaps it was a scripture in the Bible. Perhaps you received a prophetic word. Revisit these. Perhaps you're struggling to hear God afresh because he is still wanting to speak to you about previous things. You know, I'm reminded of the time Mary and Joseph took a journey and left Jesus behind. It took them three days to even notice that they had walked on without him. They had to run back to where they had last seen him in order to find him again. Sometimes our lack of hearing is not because God doesn't want to speak. It's because we have moved on when he hasn't. Camp out on the last thing you heard from the Lord. And so as we conclude, let me read to you the words of Jesus. He says this. But when the Pharisees heard that he, this is Jesus, had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. He said, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to them, and this is quoting the Shema in Deuteronomy 6, he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. 
This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. That's from Matthew 22. What is God's will for your life this year? Love God, love your neighbor. Whatever you find yourself doing, love God and love others. Hear these words, live them out. Life in abundance will follow. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the beginning of a new year. I thank you that you have taken me thus far. And we take a moment at the beginning of a new year to reflect on what has been, where we've come from, and to look ahead to where we are going. And King Jesus, Lord Jesus, we invite you right now to speak. We want to be hearers, not just with our ears, but with our hearts. We want to hear your voice, that we might know you, that we might know your way, that we might take appropriate action and respond to what you are speaking to us about. And Father, I want to take a moment with all those watching with me to repent for any time where I have purely heard your words with my ears and ignored them with my heart. Where I've read something in scripture, where I've received an encouragement or a word and I've just parked it for another time. Lord, I repent. I apologize and I turn about. I say, God, I don't want to do that again. I don't want to do that this year. This year is a year for hearing and obeying, listening and responding. And so today, in this moment, I commit myself afresh to being a follower of Jesus, a disciple of Jesus. I commit to reading your word, to seeking counsel, to expecting to hear from you in dreams and visions and the prophetic. I commit to taking steps of faith and trusting in what you've said about who you are. And I thank you that as I take a step of faith today, as I take a, an action, I will see you move and I will see life and life in abundance, the life that you promised spring up in my life. We give this day to you, this year to you. We say our hope is not in the external circumstances of life. But with the famous hymn, we say my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Tim. And I wish, I wish there was a way that we could do something about after that preach about action and taking action. I wish there was some way that we could like do something about it. Huh, mate, I've got it. Take a next step. Ah, uh, yes, of course. I've heard a few people say that a few times over the last few months. Maybe we should do that. And if you've never heard of a next step, it's anything you can do to take a next step towards Jesus. And that could be you could a prayer request, it could be you're sharing a story of what God has done in your life. It might be that you just need to chat to somebody or you're, you've just heard about Jesus for the first time or second time or third time or you're not sure about him and you want to find out more or you're new to New Life Church. And we'd love to really get to know you a little bit better and there's an easy way to do that. You can click on the link in the description or scan the QR code now. And guys, just a heads up, our new term of small groups are opening tomorrow. So check out our website and sign up to a small group uh, for this term and this new year. Well, I think it's been an amazing morning. We've heard some great, solid teaching from the Bible. We've had a great time in worship. And guys, I really hope God's spoken to you uh, about an action you can take in this new year.
And all that's left to say really is that we hope you enjoyed this morning and we hope to see you next week. Bye. Bye.